Hey, welcome, welcome back. back. I'm Adam. I'm Brett. And we are the Wall Twins. If this is your first time here with us, though, welcome. welcome. Consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything we do, even if we're not well, going to be cooking. Today we're not. And I always point out it is 99.9% .9 to the time we are cooking. Here's that point. Zero one, one. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. But today's purpose is to talk, especially to new griddlers. Yes. Things that we have found over the couple of years that we've been doing this. We've done hundreds of cooks. In fact, the hundreds. In fact, it could be wrong. I think we have close to 400 cooks on the channel. I, well, all in all, that's not been filmed and stuff. Probably closer to a thousand. Well, at least right. between the two of us, for yeah, sure. Yeah, we've got a lot of cooks and a lot of things that we do. And every time we look at it, either the Facebook groups or the other areas in which we have influence, or we're a part of. People are always asking, hey, what's the first thing I should cook? Or what are some cooks that I should know? And we thought, you know what? Let's do a quick list and not only a list, but a quick walkthrough. If this is like your one-stop shop of, hey, can I do this or should I do this? We want to give you confidence and go right in. Yeah, well, first of all, if you are asking if you cook on a griddle, yes, you should. Absolutely. And, and you can do just about anything and everything on the griddle. A lot of people say wrong tool, wrong job. We say wrong for you for saying that. <laughs> so, That's true. But we're going to jump right into the list. Right when you get your griddle, you've got, whether you've got it all seasoned or you, if you got like the Sierra like us or an ultimate where it's just ceramic top and you can just basically plug and play once you've done the burn off. Here we go, starting with. Right. Well, first things first, before we get to the smash burgers, yeah, to get smash burgers. Before you get it, before you get to the first one, you got to get to bacon. You got to get oh yeah, bacon. kind of bacon. And a lot of people, if you are seasoning, will use bacon as their first right, part seasoning. Of the seasoning right. But also, we just love bacon. It goes in so many other of the cooks. But you got to get good at cooking bacon. But really, the first true cook that you got to learn, or at least in our opinion, our opinion, smash burgers. Smash burgers. Smash burgers yes. are incredible. And part of the importance with smash burgers is also using the right meat. We have found 80-20 is spectacular. Some would say a little bit less, down to 70-30, even 90-10. Listen, yeah. it all works, it is all great, but 80-20 to yeah. us is a sweet spot. The perfect vision right. for a perfect smash burger is 80-20. You have perfect smash burger vision, it's 80-20. And vision. if you use another kind and you're like, ooh, I should have, yeah, hindsight is 80-20 yeah, when is it 80 comes to a smash burger. <laughs> to get it right. <laughs> but really, so it starts with those, and people always wonder what size. So if you're talking about a typical hamburger bun, we use anywhere from three to three and a half ounce meatballs. We've seen as some people do as small as 2.5 and even as large as five to seven ounces. It really is a personal preference for us. We have found about three to three and a half ounces works perfect. Yep. And then you season it up with salt and pepper is the easiest way and lay it on the griddle. The biggest thing is, is getting that high heat on the griddle. Now, if you're on one of the cold rolled steel, like a Blackstone or Camp Chef, something like that, you can get that thing cranked super high. If you're on one of the ultimate griddles or like the Sierra, the ceramic, we have found that cooking a medium, you're still getting over 400 degrees easy. Easy. Which is gonna give you a really good sear so you can go ahead and toss your meatballs on. So you want to lay either a little bit of oil or no oil, again, if you're on the ceramic. Yep. And uh, key is getting these when they're hot. Let the griddle get hot first. Lay your meat down and then let it sit for about 30 seconds or so and then give it a good press. Now we recommend holding for 10 to 12, 13 seconds right in there. And that is going to give you a really good sear. Now the thing is too, this might stick just a little bit. No worries. The meat will release when it is ready to do so. Yep. And then you get your scraper under there and flip it. You're looking for that crust, what we call the mild, mild reaction, reaction. Yes. Which is so good. And if you're adding cheese at this point, it's where you want to cheese them up and they don't have to stay very long on the second side. If you're doubling them up, like, uh, like we love to do, you're going to double them up and pull them up and then dress these however you want to. Yes. Smash burgers, by the way, we have done thick burger versus smash burger and we prefer the smash burger. Well, that was TBD. Oh. We liked them both. A burger is a burger is a burger. We love them all, but smash burgers are our absolute yeah, favorite. Yes, they are our absolute favorite. Yeah, not to say there's anything wrong with a regular burger, right. but smash burger is the way to go. All right, so going from lunch to dinner, now let's go to breakfast. You've got to put, and not just bacon and eggs, <laughs> not just pancakes. We're talking, do the biggest breakfast you've ever done in your life. Like we've done an oversized omelet. And we're talking big breakfast. We're not talking about a couple strips of bacon, a couple <laughs> eggs. We're saying cover this thing from top to bottom, left to right, back to front. Line it up with bacon. Throw a huge thing of scrambled eggs on there, right. an oversized omelet. But your basic breakfast, make it bigger on the griddle. And that's the one thing about it, too, is how many people you can cook for on the griddle. Like If we're making French toast, we can cover this whole thing and feed the masses. Yep. I mean, it's really, it's really nice and easy. And like Brett said, bacon. And when you learn how to cook eggs on the griddle, there's nothing better. And yep. there's no better way to do it. Whether you prefer sunny side up, over easy, or scrambled, which by the way, scrambled are my favorite to make on there just because they, they turn out so beautiful. They look so pretty. But, and so simple scrambled eggs, by the way, here's a tip. Don't put anything but the eggs and salt and pepper, which is our family secret. Right. Yeah. A little bit of butter. And but, oh, butter you lay the butter first. down. Right. But yeah, we used to use milk 
and then some people right. use cream or something like that. I see no what you're need. saying, yeah. We keep it simple, but really, uh, any big breakfast that you like, just make sure that you do it on the griddle. We really feel like uh, for so long when I was growing up or when we were growing up, mm -hmm. we go to a campsite, someone had a griddle, they were brought it, they brought it for breakfast. breakfast exactly. That, that was the purpose of it. So it's so much more than that, but breakfast had to be on the list because you just got to know how to make a big breakfast. Exactly right. So uh, that rounds out number two and moving on to three. This and any of these, by the way, could be number one, especially yeah. this one. Yeah, it, fried rice. Fried rice. Are you kidding me? Fried rice? Yes. Learn how to do fried rice. And we have a lot of videos that show a lot of different ways. I would say of all of our videos, our chicken fried rice is the most viewed, our, our very first chicken it fried is. rice video. But the shrimp Over fried a million views. Yep, our shrimp fried rice for our, our latest fried rice. And I say yes. this because we get better and better and better at it. That's the biggest thing you'll learn when you do any of these dishes is that you get better and better. So with fried rice, the first thing is, is we use four to six cups of rice. Use as much or as little as you like and then cook it indoors. So if we, we use a rice cooker and then we put it in the refrigerator overnight, overnight, then that gives us a dried out rice to start with. And we lay butter down if we remember to do so first. <laughs> if we don't, key. we, get our, that is we get our oil, a little bit of uh, uh, garlic, which we really like. And then we put that, make sure you get that butter melted and then put the rice down. The key is moving the rice around. Brent likes his a little bit crispier. We had a lot of people reach out and say, hey, why is mine too crispy? If you let it sit on the griddle for too long, you gotta remember it's already cook. cooked rice, so it's gonna overcook, so Right, to speak. so we're just lightly frying it to give it to give it a little bit more texture sauce. So you move it around and then get your veggies and your protein. So the veggies are gonna take a little bit longer. Get those thrown down first. We usually do veggies from frozen, to be honest with you. Just get them going, a little bit of oil in there. Yep. Salt and pepper, whatever seasonings you're using, whatever sauces you're using. We use ABC Sweet soy sauce yes is our sesame favorite. oil and don't ever make fried rice without MSG, MSG monosodium we, glutamate. And we use Accent for that. It makes it really good. Uncle Roger will appreciate you doing that. And be very disappointed if, if you, you don't. don't. Right, but the fried rice cooks for about eight to 10 minutes total time. The rice itself, it can take a little bit longer while you're working the other protein. Depe yeah, depending on the temperatures. The other. So chick whether it's chicken, fr uh, shrimp, or steak, whatever it is, just learn how long each is gonna take. Shrimp takes the fastest. So if that's gonna go quick, do that at the very end, just before you're ready to mix everything yep. and pull it and serve it. And I promise Learning how to do fried rice right is a huge crowd pleaser. You can serve large groups and everybody's happy with that. Yes, exactly. Listen, we're more than halfway through the list. Yeah, we've only got two left. And this one, again, we'd be remiss if cheesesteaks were cheese not steak. on the list, be it steak or chicken. Either way, a cheesesteak is a must to cook and on the griddle. And can we clarify something? Yes. Cheesesteaks. We didn't say Philly cheesesteaks. Correct. So before the people from Philadelphia come at us for telling everybody to make Philly cheesesteaks, although, Philly cheesesteaks are incredibly amazing to make. Just learn the correct process, but overall cheesesteaks are amazing yeah, and they're you, so simple. You'd think that people would just be so proud that someone is calling it where they're from, but yeah. not in Philly. <laughs> they, are, they are so proud of theirs that it has to be just right or else it's not a Philly. So cheesesteaks are a bust. But our people from Philly, we oh, love we you love and yes. we, get, we get the passion, we love it. Really, first of all, the best thing to do if you're doing steak, I'm gonna go ahead with steak. Yep. Uh, you wanna get ribeye and you want it sa shaved so thin you can only see <laughs> one side. Right. That is it. You can, uh, and then the seasoning, you you could do something as simple as we've gone with the usual suspects, which is our own seasoning, or I like just, just traditional salt and pepper for this. That is it. It cooks literally in like two to three minutes because again, it's shaved so thin you can only see one side. Once it is cooked and you have the peppers and onions, whatever vegetables you have, you incorporate them. You want to make sure you have a good roll with integrity. Uh, we usually go with the ones from Publix. You want to get those little warmed up on the griddle surface as well. You're going to open them up and then before you put the bread on, you take your provolone cheese, you're gonna put it on top of the meat, it is going to start to melt, and then you're gonna put the bread over top of that, scoop underneath, flip it over, and it is ready to serve once it cools, yes. because these things are piping hot. It is such a simple sandwich to cook, and one that you will be doing over and over, and time and time again, and it's gonna be a family favorite. And we've done so many variations. We've done a buffalo chicken cheesesteak. Chicken cheesesteak is my wife's favorite still to this day. So Cali style. Ways. Cali style, in fact, and you can do any cheese as well. We're just talking a traditional cheesesteak for us. Yeah, I almost said Philly there. Yep. Traditional cheesesteak with, with the actual uh, ribeye and provolone cheese, the roll, and man, you get that thing all together with your onions and it's, this thing's spectacular. But we say something you gotta know how to do because it's one of those, it's kind of one of those like uh, sandwiches you know about, you hear about, you've had at a restaurant and they're always amazing. You're like, nah, I wish I knew how to do this. 
a lot easier than you would think. Yes. All right, before we get to the last one, Brett, we have a couple of honorable mentions. Yes, we do have a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, first of all, any of the uh, griddle fries. I like yes. doing those from, uh, you know, like we've done our Chick-fil-A copycats. Mm -hmm. So to our chicken, fry, our chicken fried steak, uh, our fish and chips, yes. any of the, the griddle fries are fun to do. They are, absolutely. And I would say this kind of leads us into the last one. And by the way, we love our copycats. We love yeah. hundreds. Any of our Asian dishes yeah, are yeah, so yeah. amazing. Yes, it, yeah, when you, I'm sorry I didn't say this. When you said, she, when you said fried rice, I want to say uh, Asian Habachi. dishes are my favorite to cook when we on the griddle. When we first came up with this list, when I said fried rice, Brett really wanted to say hibachi. And I'm like, yeah, but that's a little bit more, uh, I wouldn't even say complicated. It just involves a lot more steps. I say fried rice first, eventually you want to do a hibachi where that's the hole with the yeah. noodles Tepin and yaki. the other, yeah. and the additional uh, vegetables, things like that, eventually down the road. So we'd be we'd be wrong if we didn't mention that. Yeah. Also, I would say crunch wraps. Yes, crunch, crunch wraps, wraps, because when we first made crunch wraps, that was a blast and it changed everything it for me. It did, well, and for me, first of all, crunch wraps had to make the list until Adam said number five. I was like, oh yeah, I guess it kind of follows under that. But number five, Tacos. Tacos. And when we say tacos, we leave that vague on purpose. We've done street tacos. I would even throw fajitas in that mix of getting that in there with the <laughs> taco as Okay. But it's because your tortilla and your yep. meats and your veggies. And we got the burritos. Right, but we've done street tacos. In fact, I did them for my family for the 4th of July. Fed 45 people and they are a hit. Brett does them weekly. Yep. Whether it be street tacos, whether it be the Taco Bell copycats, which are some of our absolute favorite. Yep. The double decker taco. And like yep. I said, that, that crunch wrap kind of falls in that same category. Yes. But we love them. Aside from smash burgers, aside from fried rice, I would say we've thrown more tacos, burritos, and those kinds of things on the griddle than anything Easy. else. Easy. 100%. So. Uh, smash burgers, number one tacos and uh, those uh, next. Right, and so rather than walk you through the steps on that, you can do tacos so many different ways. The biggest thing is getting your meat down. Don't forget to warm up your tortillas. Yep. And then whatever you're dressing it with. So that yep. is our list of the top five cooks every griddler must do. But if you're an experienced griddle or new to the game, there's something you want to try or got to try, feel free to comment below and share with us. And feel free to share with us your favorite cook that you've done so far on the griddle. Let's build this list right here. A, a kind of a one-stop shop for people who are looking for quick ideas. And also, if you want to share some recipes or other ideas right down here below, that's awesome. Not just for us, but for others in the griddle game. We love the griddle community. Yep. We love being a part of the griddle fam. We have griddle fam. This is right. what we're all about is our griddle fam. We right. love all our griddle fam. Whatever you're cooking on, if you're griddling your family, we love you. We love it. And so we just, like we said, we wanted to share five cooks that any new griddler should know or any griddler in general. Yeah. And yeah. you may agree or disagree with this list. It's just another excuse to get to come and share some of our favorites with exactly. you. Exactly. And you know what? We may do something like this in a year and we might have five different cooks. I highly doubt it, right. uh, at least on some of them. But this is the wonderful thing we love about the griddle. We say this time and time again, griddle, co griddle cooking is here to stay. Right. It's getting bigger and bigger. As you, if you've been in the communities, you have noticed it's yeah. getting bigger and bigger day by day. And we are absolutely loving it. We're here for we're it. here for it. Exactly. Again, comment below if you've got some things to add. Yep. If this video helped you or gave you some ideas and thoughts, things that you should do or can do and now have confidence in doing on your griddle, make sure and give this a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. It's one way which you can support us in what we do. Yep. Another way you can support us is through our merchandise. There's a link to that in the description below this video. We love getting to come and share these cook ideas yes, with we you. Do. Exactly. If we're not cooking, we're it, talking about exactly. cooking. Exactly. And we love, sh we love sharing our love and joy for cooking. Right, Brett, aside from coming and sharing that love and joy of cooking. And then why else, are we, oh. <laughs> why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin, no, no matter, matter what. what. And with that, we bid you adieu. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And griddle on!